I guess, you know, you've been talking a lot about uh, the call and everything. I guess what, what is your, like how many, if you're on call, like how many typical days in a week are you on call? Is that typical for most I think when people get interested in neurosurgery, they think, well, how, you know, am I just on call all the time or, you know, what's like, how many weekends are you on call in a month? And I guess, is that typical? It probably is very, I would imagine probably so very variable. It is. Yeah, it is. It is very fair. And, you know, it is one of the uh, most important topics that comes up uh, in the interview process um, and, and really both sides. So show equal interest, you know, the, the, uh, the applicant is obviously interested in knowing what kind of a life they're getting themselves into. And then the people who are part of the practice want to know if they can potentially offload some call and, you know, what type of a partner they're onboarding. I was uh, very frank upfront when I joined the practice that I enjoy, again, taking a call, just like we've talked about. I enjoy being, um, you know, on the spot in the trenches in the ER and, and, and be asked to solve a problem quickly on my mm-hmm. toes. So, uh, since 2016, when, uh, you know, I started here, I've been taking the, the, the bulk of the call. I mean, I take anywhere between 10 to 14, sometimes even 15 days of call a month. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the math is not necessarily uh, simple. It's not, I can't really tell you if I take two calls a week or four calls a week. It really depends on my partners. You know, some of my partners are senior and they have you know, other obligations or commitments. Um, and so, uh, you know, I could have stretches where, you know, I'm on call six, seven, eight days in a row. Um, if for example, one of my partners is on vacation or at a conference, uh, at the double Um, or I could take, uh, you know, three calls a week, you know, get a weekend off and then do a four day stretch and so forth. But, uh, you know, we're, we, uh, I'm part of a fairly large practice. And so, uh, you know, we make it work, you know, we basically know, that there's 30 days to 31 days a month that needs call coverage. And, you know, we, we divvy it up along our uh, interests lines and, and, and time obligations, family obligations, and somehow every month it works. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. I imagine being, having good partners is probably the key to that uh, and probably having a good number of partners as well. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, having partners that are committed to your success is uh, really the most important part um, of, of this whole uh, process. Um, you know, a lot of times it's easy for the applicants to get distracted by the location of the practice. Certainly that's important. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's the most important uh, uh, piece of the puzzle. Uh, it's easy to get distracted by the, uh, the finances involved, how much you're getting paid, uh, what the compensation package is for trauma call coverage, for example, what the benefits are. And I'm not naive to deny that those aren't important. They're very important. But I'd, I'd, I'd argue that having partners that are truly your, your uh, partners, people who will vouch for you, people who will protect you, um, people who will um, uh, ensure that they do everything possible that you succeed, I think that is uh, of the utmost importance. That's not something that money can buy. And, uh, and I think if you um, talk to some of the other uh, physicians that you're going to interview um, and, and, and just simply look at some of the, the statistics out there around the country, the, the number or the percentage of physicians who change their practice after two to three years uh, is, is a significant number. It's not a low number. And so a fair number of physicians join and then, uh, you know, the first year, you know, they're just getting uh, their head wrapped around what's going on. Then they get settled in. And then as soon as they start doing some serious cases, that's when they start to realize that, you know, maybe these partners weren't what I thought they were. Mm -hmm. And then that's when you start competing. You know, the senior guys may potentially get a little ruffled that the junior guy is taking cases away from them. You know, all physicians have egos. Uh, and so that's when you really start to start to see the, uh, the, the lines and the friendships crack. And that's why people leave. And right? mm-hmm. it's not all about poor compensation. It's not because certain locations are flatter than the others. And, you know, Georgia has uh, more trees than, you know, uh, Ohio or something like that. It's, yeah. it's really the bond that you form with the partners that you have because, mm-hmm. it, you know, you succeed and you fail as a group. Right. Right. That makes sense. I mean, it's like a team essentially. Exactly. Um, That makes sense. Yeah.